Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be comparing a 2022 GMC Sierra AT4 to a 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2. Now, the reason I'm doing this comparison is the trucks are actually pretty close in price, and so it obviously begs the question, should you go AT4 or ZR2? And again, this is an AT4X, this is the regular AT4. The AT4X is more expensive than the ZR2, but don't worry, we'll have some comparisons on that in the future. But anyways, before we get in the video, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get right into the video. Starting under the hood of the ZR2, we have a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes to a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 420 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque. Axle ratio is 3.23. This is the only engine option available for the ZR2 Silverado. Now, popping over to the Sierra AT4, this one has the Duramax diesel. You can also get the 6.2 V8 uh, with the AT4. So you actually have engine options with the regular AT4. As for this Duramax, it's good for 277 horsepower horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque and then it goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission just like the 62 v8 now going over the front end of the zr2 we have 11.2 inches of ground clearance you can see the 6.2 l badge there on the side and then you have that black accenting there in the center of the hood and then this one has the blue paint that just looks fantastic it's obviously the launch color for the zr2 and i don't know i love it You've got the daytime running light and you can see all the black accenting throughout the grill. And notice we've got the flow tie with the red accenting there at the center portion. Red tow hooks here, really aggressive. And notice you have that exposed skid plate that pops out prominently just like a Ford Raptor. And yeah, overall really cool, aggressive looking front end. And notice that they have the fog lights down there pretty uh, low on the bumper, which is definitely interesting, but don't worry, it's, it's above the skid plate, that's all that matters. Now, going over the AT4, we have more of a luxury appearance. And speaking on that luxury appearance, let's talk about uh, ground clearance, no, not related, but we gotta talk about it, 10.9 inches with the AT4. So there is a little bit of a ground clearance difference. And then notice here with the C-shaped daytime running lights and then the LED headlamps. And you can see the whole front grille, how it's just, uh, you know, very large, but then with the coloration, it's more towards the luxury side of things. Got the camera below the GMC logo, AT4 logo. And then you can see here with the fog light, pretty low on the bumper, just like the ZR2. Got the parking sensors, tow hooks there on the front end as well. Uh, this has skid plates like the ZR2. It's just that they don't showcase them like you have with the ZR2 because they're trying to go for more of a luxury theme with the AT4. But popping here to the side, we've got 18 inch wheels on the ZR2, 33 inch tires. Uh, now from what I've kind of seen visually and what I've been told is these tires are just slightly, very slightly larger uh, than the tires that you have on the AT4 and the regular Trail Boss. You can see the front suspension there, just like a Trail Boss in AT4, you got a two inch lift from the factory. And then you can see the fender flare right there. And then notice here with it's uh, painted differently there on the bottom compared to the top. And that's supposed to make it so that it's more durable from rock chips and all that kind of stuff. And you can kind of see it a little bit closer there actually. But popping here to the rear, still have leaf springs, but we've got the Multimatic shocks in the back. So the DSSV shocks from Multimatic. It's a spool valve system with three chambers, really advanced stuff, dampens really well. And then you can see with the high ground clearance exhaust tips, and then popping over here to the Sierra, you guys can kind of see with the tires, right? Uh, they're still 33s, but they just look like they're like a little bit shorter. Um, anyways, 18 inch wheels just like what you have there on the ZR2. And you guys can see there with the silver brake caliper. And then here's the front suspension again, two inch lift from the factory. And uh, something else I want to mention is I think that's also why this uh, has slightly less ground clearance than the ZR2, that you know, the 0.4 inches in difference in ground clearance. Now see so the off-road side steps, got the AT4 badge, and then here's your full side view. And then obviously, you know, the shaping of the front and rear wall and everything in the center will kind of change that a little bit too but i think it's mostly with the uh, tire difference anyways you can see here at the shocks got the rancho shocks so a little bit more of a simplistic shock system and then you can see here with the key fob for the zr2 you've got the tailgate drop down and something to mention with any gm products if you're on any bit of like a hill at all where the truck the front end is slanted down the tailgate just doesn't want to drop down uh, notice with the power outlet there in the back and then we've got spray and bed liner right got the zr2 logo there at the ed end so that you have that uh, you know flex to everyone that uh, uses your bed right 
And then this one doesn't have the auto raise function with the tailgate, but it's an option that you can get on the new Silverados. And yeah, it's a good looking uh, bed area, but going over the rest of the rear, you can see here with the taillights, got the upgraded taillights uh, that you can get in higher end packages with the Silverado Chevrolet stamped into the tailgate. Silverado logo, ZR2 badge there on the other side. And then notice here with the bumpers, you got the parking sensors integrated in the bumpers. They're all blacked out with the bed step there on the side and the receiver hitch down below. And then you can see the full size spare tire, 33 just like the other tires. And yeah, that's the rear end. Now popping back over to the AT4, you can see functionality in the key fob is identical. And you guys are probably wondering on uh, payload with both of the trucks, it's pretty similar across Chevy's lineup. Um, I, it seemed, or GM's lineup rather, it seems like there's not huge differences in payload or towing capacity between different powertrain options or uh, frankly, different trim packages. When you do the lighter optioned trim packages, you notice the AT4 logo there at the end, um, you can get higher payload. So like if you do like a base model Silverado, that'll have a slightly higher payload. Um, or if you get like the 274 cylinder, but like, the point that I'm trying to make is they're all pretty similar across the truck lineup, whether it's, you know, a Chevy or a GMC like this. This one does have the multi-pro tailgate. You can get that on the ZR2 as well as an option. Uh, it makes it so you cannot get the auto raise function though for sure if you get the multi-pro because it's just too heavy. And then notice here with the C-shaped lights in the rear, definitely a cool aesthetic. And then you got the bumper step. Uh, notice the bumper's the same. It's just, you got the squished exhaust tip covers here that poke out the backs of the high ground clearance exhaust tips like on the ZR2. Got the AT4 badge there. And yeah, they don't let you forget that it's an AT4, which is kind of funny. But yeah, it's a good looking truck, kind of more boxy with the design. And then here is the interior with the ZR2. So this is where we've got two completely different uh, ways of making an interior. So notice here with the material use and with the coloration, it's kind of got like a sporty theme, but also they've picked colors with the interior that aren't going to show stains as much. Uh, that's kind of what gray does and you know, just darker colors in general. Um, but also notice with the seats themselves, how there's, uh, you can see like the design on the seat would make it so it'd be easier to wipe off the seats. And so that's kind of, again, going towards the off-road theme. And then notice rubber floor mats, got a couple cup holders, got the heated seats for the rear, and then the USB ports down below. And you know, tons of storage space because again, it's the larger size cab with the Silverado. Now popping over to the AT4, notice we have more of a luxury theme here with the interior on the AT4. Uh, so notice material use is actually pretty similar, just the coloration on it, right? We don't have bright stitching, bright neon yellow stitching. We've got brown and brown leather, and we've got perforated leather, which looks fantastic, but it's not as easy to clean off, right? And so you can just see with the whole design, kind of what they've gone for, under seat storage. And then notice with the floor mats too, right? The ZR2 is just like rubber floor mats. AT4 is like cloth and rubber, and you can take off the cloth floor mats if you don't want them. Heated seats in the back, vents, USBs, and a cup holder armrest as well. And space is identical because the cabs are identical with both of the trucks, if you guys are wondering on that. And then popping to the front of the ZR2, you guys can see again with that top portion there, again, all the neon stitching. And then you got your window controls right there with the mirror adjustments. The mirrors do power fold in, you got memory seats, blind spot monitoring for the mirrors, so a bunch of nice tech. Speaker for the Bose sound system, and then your ZR2 plaque. And then there's a quick look at the front seat. And you can see again with that neon stitching, and you've got that cool like tread pattern in the center, but don't worry, still, by what Chevy says, easy to wipe off. And then you got the pedals down below, and then notice here, we've got our drive mode select, drive line select, light controls, all in that same area, tow haul mode all in that area, heads up display controls. And then you've got the adjustment there for the steering wheel, which is power, but there's a look there. And then popping over to the Sierra again, you can see again with the trim there at the top. And then notice again, towards the luxury side of things for me, theme perspective, and also the window controls, AT4 badge again, they don't let you forget that it's an AT4 memory seats. And then one of the mirrors does have blind spot mine, just like the zero two Bose sound system, uh, sound system the same between both the trucks. AT4 in the headrest, and then notice again with the brown leather and then the stitching all throughout. And then, you know, pretty normal pedal layout down below. Popping up top, same exact setup with the light controls, drive line select, tow haul mode select, drive mode select. It's all the same uh, with both of the trucks from that perspective. And notice the controls to heads up display, and then again, the steering wheel is power adjustable. 
And let's pop back into the ZR2. So I left these animations in here so you guys can kind of see when you close the door, the animation that shows up with both of the trucks, the difference between it, right? But you don't have to watch that. You just can just turn on the truck if you want. And then it'll just start up just like that, basically. So here's the steering wheel in the ZR2. Uh, you guys can see the padding all around. And then notice there's darker stitching there in the center portion of the steering wheel. And then you can see controls for the center tack, voice command, phone controls, paddle shifters there on the back of the steering wheel with the radio controls below the paddle shifters. And then you have your cruise control with your heated steering wheel button, turn signal, windshield wiper stock, you know, normal works. Black touch heavy bow tie looks pretty cool. Full digital gauge cluster. And so notice with the drive modes, you have your normal off-road and then you have your terrain. So the off-road is going to be for your like higher speed off-roading and then the terrain is going to be for like your crawling from an off-road perspective. Uh, if you guys are wondering, and then there is a tow haul mode as well that you can go into. So, you know, it's customizable from a drive mode perspective. And I, I think the gauge cluster looks great in the ZR2. I think they did a really good job with the overall aesthetic of it, uh, layout, all that stuff. And then you can see the heads up display there with the truck. Now here's the infotainment system. So you've got the shortcut bar there on the side. You got the main screen, which you can see response time is great with that screen. And they have the little side screen, say auxiliary screen. Uh, looks cool with how it's set up with the clock. I, I've mentioned that in several videos, but I think it looks great. And then we have a full 360 camera system with the ZR2 as well. So you can see out of every single viewpoint of the truck, which is just awesome. Um, and resolution on the camera system is amazing too. And so not only can you see out of every single angle of the truck, including the wheel shots, but you've got really good resolution so you can kind of see exactly what's happening, which means that you can pretty much spot yourself while you're crawling with the truck, pretty much. Now, notice lane departures. We've got parking sensors, auto stop, start tailgate drop down. We've got the hazard light, stability control, hill descent control, front and rear lockers with the ZR2, and it's something that you activate yourself. Trailer brake control, and then you've got a dual zone climate system, heated, cooled seats, and so, you know, it's got all those nice luxury features, some extra storage space there. Notice a couple cup holders, and then you got the shifter here for that 10-speed automatic. Again, it does have the manual shift function if you want to use it. And then here's the center console setup. So you can see there with it, again, with the neon stitching, and then got the dual glove box set up as well. I love how it just pops up there on the top one, and then look at that neon stitching. And then you can see that continues there onto the dash as well. Camera mirror at the very top and then we do have a sunroof there regular sunroof power sliding window as well and here's the window sticker for the zr2 so you guys can see here from you know a standard equipment perspective comes with quite a bit now this is before the price increase with the zr2 just so you guys know zr2 is more expensive now for the base price but you can see this one stickered for seventy one thousand dollars the same truck now stickers for like seventy four thousand roughly and here's the animation with the AT4. Pretty cool. Well, that says AT4 and it shows the mountains and everything. I don't know. I, just, I think it's a fun little graphic to have. I love the stop start button in the GMC. I think it looks a little bit better too. I will mention that. And then from a steering wheel perspective, you've got the GMC logo, right? That kind of uh, makes it look a little bit different. And then you got the brown stitching. And you can see some of the trim pieces right in the steering wheel are different to differentiate it, but all the controls are the same. So you can see the paddle shifters, radio controls, cruise control, all of that is identical. Turn signal, windshield wiper stock, all of that is the same. So nothing's changed there. And then here's with the center gauge cluster. Uh, notice you got the diesel exhaust brake because again, this one has the diesel when you pop into the tow haul mode. And then you can have two drive modes. You just have normal and off-road. There's no terrain mode. So the off-road mode is going to be your high speed slash crawling mode with the AT4. But obviously... The shocks that it has can't handle high speed like the ZR2 can handle. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, more so. But great digital gauge cluster shows you a bunch of different info on the truck. And I think it looks a little bit, maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn because like they both have great resolution, but they both have kind of like different coloration. And same thing with the infotainment system. But first off, from a camera perspective, they're identical. So they both have the same 360 camera system. And so you're not winning with uh, one truck over the other from a camera system perspective got the wheel shots all that and then this one has the bed camera as well so you know it's it's solid from a camera system perspective just like the zero two and then same infotainment system just coloration on it's a little bit different it seems like they're going for like this 
darker, more mature theme with the coloration on the screen. It's the sportier theme that you have with the ZR2 infotainment system. And the same thing with the clock, right? Just looks a little bit different. But, you know, both of the infotainment systems are great. Again, like I said, I like the stop-start button more. Heated, cooled seats, dual-zone climate, just like the ZR2. So that is all the same. And then it's got the lane departure, parking sensors, auto stop start, tailgate drop down, you got the hazard lights, stability control, hill descent control, and then the window roll down button. This has the G80 system for the rear locking. So you don't have uh, a button where you can press for that. So that's a huge difference. And then you got the shifter for the 10 speed automatic transmission. And you can see kind of how that shifts in, definitely solid. And then you've got the trailer brake control down below couple cup holders and then here's the center console set up you no know, storage space in there is great wireless phone charger just like the zero two again different theme kind of more on the luxury side and then this is where the at4 does shine the dash definitely looks a lot more luxury like compared to the zr2 that's a big difference just uh, with the appearance on it and then same glove box system just again look at like the material you surround the glove boxes that again has that kind of more luxury like appearance with the AT4. You got that like cowhide texture on the end of the glove box as well. You can see the wood trim that goes all the way across. And then camera mirror, just like the ZR2, which is a nice feature to have. And then uh, no sunroof in this particular one. Um, now that's where we're going to kind of talk about pricing. So if we put a sunroof on the AT4 and if we give it the 6.2 V8, it'd be over $70,000. This one's like $68,000. So there's, you know, still probably about, a, you know, to, with today's pricing about a three-ish thousand dollar, maybe a little bit less than that, three to two to three thousand dollar price difference between both of the trucks. The ZR2 is slightly more expensive. Here's what I have to say. The ZR2 obviously has more advanced shocks. It's going to be more capable off-road. It has more ground clearance and it, it's just, it's the off-road king. Uh, the AT4, on the other hand, again, has more of that luxury truck appearance and interior. So if you're never going to take the truck off-road and you just want a luxury appearance and luxury interior, then the AT4 is going to give that to you. And you'll be able to get an AT4 with a 6.2 V8 less expensive than a ZR2. But if you're actually going to do some off-road stuff, then ZR2 is going to be the route to go because it's just more capable off-road. And it's not like it's $10,000 more expensive. It's two or $3,000 for a similarly equipped truck. And so, yeah, it, the shocks alone are worth that price premium. So, yeah, that's just my personal opinion on it. Street truck, AT4, it does have off-road capability. If you want to see an AT4 off-road, just look up Ben Hardy GMC AT4 off-road. I did an off-road review with it. Super capable truck, uh, but it's not as capable as the ZR2 from a shock perspective. Tires are pretty similar, but then again, the ZR2 again has the front and rear lockers, whereas the AT4 just has the G80 system in the rear end. So hopefully that helps you guys out if you're comparing both of the trucks and there you go.